Jack. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, so with a movie like The Magic Flute, it's obviously it's based on something we that is known by society, but this is like a fun twist on it. And I loved all of the the singing that you got to do throughout the movie. And so for you as a performer, did you have any hesitations in kind of taking on a role like that in this kind of fantasy world? Oh my gosh, Rachel, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> straight, <laughs> straight away, I think. Um, it, for me, it was, it's, it was quite a scary undertaking because it is a known work, isn't it? It's like a known title and mm -hmm. I was aware of it. Um, and it's intimidating because opera can sometimes feel intimidating. Um, so to be cast as a character who also plays a character in the opera, I sort of, there was, I was, there was a lot of fear there. Um, luckily I had a fantastic coach called Sam Kenyon who coached my sort of singing to get it to a place where I was out of my own head and sort of into something that was workable that would work for me on set. And then on set, I was surrounded by incredible artists who I could take advice from including two fantastic opera singers mm -hmm. um so I was sort of really really helped all the way through by people who I could really trust um so it was super super scary for so many reasons it being my first feature film um it being a huge fantasy but also because it was opera because there was singing it's it's an intimidating thing but um I was helped through it by some really cool people well, and then now you're taking another big undertaking into fantasy because you're doing Shadow and Bone. So it's yeah. just like fantasy and fantasy. Um, and so what is it about the genre that you kind of like and love exploring in? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I I wish I could say that I ch chose to do these projects, but ultimately I'm very grateful to the people who gave me those opportunities. You know, uh, it's an incredible cast and director called Sophie Holland who really gave me a chance with the Magic Flute. And, um coming from a, sort of a theater background um she she allowed me into the room and, and and thought i might be a good fit for this character for tim and um yeah so i was very very lucky to people who would allow who let me into the room like that i think with um shadow and bone i just love the source material so much i loved those books i loved the character it was just so joyful and um, because I think I'd learned so much on the set of the Magic Flute of uh, technical things um, and also sort of internal things and uh, a lot of imposter syndrome that I was helped through, but again, by amazing people. On the Shadow and Bone set, I was able to sort of fully enjoy my time um, and really sort of, yeah, just, just again, spend it with brilliant people, but, but not so much in my head this time. Yeah, and I think what's so fun about the Magic Flute is uh, I was talking to Florian yesterday and I was asking about the casting of F. Murray Abram. I was like, oh, was that intentional because of Mozart? And he was like, the casting director had no idea. So it was just like, <laughs> he gave me the, gave me F. Murray Abram. And I was like, yeah, that would be great. He played Mozart. Um, <laughs> but it is a fun kind of split between newer actors we don't know. And even like some younger actors we know, like Amir uh, versus like, well-known actors like Norman Rowan and uh, F. Murray Abram. Mm -hmm. And so for you as a younger actor doing your first feature, what was it like kind of knowing you were going to go toe to toe with like some, some legends versus like a lot of young performers too, just getting their start? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I, it was amazing because I, I'm also not afraid to tell people when I'm a fan of their work. And, um, and so that was, that was amazing. I got to sort of spend some time with some people I really look up to. Um, yeah, I've said I've said it before, but I, I think it's really worth mentioning because it's such a huge part of the fabric of our film mm -hmm. is that it's one of the films um, that was filmed sort of directly after um, the COVID uh, lockdowns. And there were so many limitations on it, just like, you know, countless films that were filmed during that time that we're now seeing on screens and mm -hmm. you, you see that also knowing the amount of extra work that had to go in um that continues now um but for our film there was this sort of odd silver lining which was that because there was no live performance and there was very little sort of creative opportunities at all um we had you know opera singers opera really experienced opera singers 
and actors who have done mostly theatre work and actors who are very experienced on screen and you know Oscar winning actors and all able to they're all free and all able to work on this film which is about celebrating a live form mm -hmm. so um you know even though it's a it's a film the, the 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 intention of the film I think and it, especially for me is to inspire people to then go and see it live which is something we didn't have access to then yeah. um so that was a huge part of that for me it, it was it was amazing to meet them but it was also amazing to be on a set at all and to be able to share um time with so many different types of performer and learn from them and, and their specific set of of skills and experiences and um yeah that was really really cool um and the movie does remind me I don't know if you've seen this but it reminds me a lot of the fall in the sense that like it goes into this magical world and you're in this bright like adventure versus mm -hmm. like the real world of what's going on um and that split is really fun and I do like that your character is our guide through it and we get to kind of he's also just confused by everything. he's just like I guess I'm in this magical flute world now yeah, sure. um uh, it, what's it like doing those kind of splits between like his real world which is sad like he's part of the dead dad club but like <laughs> and then going into like the fantastical world of the magic loop for you as an actor what was kind of like the breakdown in your head of like how you navigated both sides of this movie because it is yeah kind of distinct worlds no it's it's such a good question as well and I think it's it's, it's interesting because um the the, the magical world is also uh, operatic, literally, mm -hmm. in that, you know, the, the, the words are more poetic. They're hundreds of years old, in the, especially in the German version, which is using like the Schikaneda words mm -hmm. um, in the opera. And these feelings that these characters are feeling are operatic. It's, it's made to be on a stage in front of thousands of people, or hundreds of people at least, you know, um it's so expansive and so big and it goes with the genre so doing that on film when the camera is there and the person you're performing to in the audience is there is really challenging because you want to try and find something that's authentic and you want i'm trying to you know i'm playing a 17 year old boy in in the real world who is now you know singing uh, an aria to a portrait of someone he's just fallen in love with in a second you know and it's these huge feelings which on an operatic stage I think makes so much sense um so it's it's a, it's a challenge totally um but again I just had I had to have full trust in the team I was with and um get out of my head a little bit um what I love about the um differing of like the two worlds what what really meant something to me was that it felt like a literal representation of like escapism into an art form. Mm. Uh, it sounds super cliche, but genuinely that it, it did mean something <laughs> to me in that, you know, for Tim, um, escaping into the opera was a way to distract himself from what was mm. a really tough time. It was a way for him to reconnect to a form that he obviously had some love for, otherwise he wouldn't go to the school in the first place. It was a way for him, he also learned things whilst he was there and, mm -hmm. and went through something. And it was also a way for him to connect to his dad because it was his dad's favorite. Um, and it feels metaphoric, but it also like, that's what it, that's why we do it. That's why we go to theater or watch things or share things with each other. It's, it's to like escape and to learn or whatever we need to get from it. But the opera could be that too. And it is yeah. that for Tim. Yeah, um, I loved the movie. I do have to say you have one of my favorite, uh, very clearly millennial uh, Instagram bios I've ever seen. Which is, because <laughs> I was like, oh, how, I wonder how old Jack is. And I went and looked, I was like, well, I can tell he's a millennial alone because of that Instagram. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, uh, he's seen The Little Vampire. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's a little vampire. It's I great. love that film. Me too. Rudolph from that film is my absolute style icon. I've had the same hair since I was a kid because of him. <laughs> it, was, it's so, it was so funny. I looked at it, I was like, yes, this is a 90s kid. And I know instantly just <laughs> yeah. a reference to the never ending story and a little vampire. Oh my gosh. Well, a really special thing for me was that uh, the Bavaria Film Studios, where we shot the film, is also uh -huh. where they shot the never ending story. Can you imagine how oh, I, I felt cried. when I found out that news? Because I was already overwhelmed to begin with. I was already overwhelmed. And then that, I could have fainted. I got to meet Falcor, the luck dragon. 
I would have I died. I would have just died. I think I did. I don't think I exist, to be honest. Ever <laughs> since then, it's just been a ghost. While in, I like, in Shadow Bros play by Ghost. Oh my god. I flipped out because of Stranger Things singing the theme song. So like I would have <laughs> <I do. laughs> Yeah. Totally. Love it. Uh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed no, talking thank to you. you. And I can't wait to see uh, Shadow and Bone too. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much. So nice <laughs> to meet you. you. Nice meeting have you. Thank you so much, Rachel.